Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Starting the meeting at 5.30 tonight is the September 28th, 2021 meeting of the Election Commission. Uh, first, we'll do a uh, roll call. Uh, Chairwoman Zaniku. Present. Uh, Vice Chair Pope. Here. Uh, Commissioner Anthes. Here. Commissioner Patton. Here. Okay, all are present. Okay, moving on to uh, old business, uh, vote to accept uh, minutes from prior meeting. Uh, have a question. Sure. Uh, you say that you informed us that LHS is not available to attend the meeting due to ongoing commitments. Uh, Jim, hit your mic. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, the uh, uh, first large paragraph where you said, Mr. Veloso informed the commissioners that LHS was not available to attend the meeting due to ongoing commitments of other communities. I believe you said you would call them and see if they could be available because we said we would come any time they wanted, you know, any day and any time they wanted. Um, I don't recall that, and I don't think that's, Mark recalled it in the minutes. Um, that's, what you, um, that's what you indicated to us. Did it? Yes. Okay. Um, I can certainly uh, take a look at the minutes, but well, didn't she, call it. She's the one who said it, and I okay. got it backed up, so... So will you be able to reach out to them to see if they can come to one of these meetings? I, I can check again. Okay. Uh, and tell them, we'll, tell, tell us when and we'll be here. Uh, and if you'd rather we do it, we'll be glad to uh, give us the phone number. We'll be glad to call them, set it up. There's only one other thing um, that I have on the minutes. Um, it looks like in the last paragraph, um, I'm sorry, the, um, it looks like four, four is adjournment, but it was three new business. In the last paragraph, Commissioner Anthes um, asked if there was a date set for the testing of the machines. And said Mr. Veloso informed the commissioners that he was waiting on receiving the ballots. And once he received them, a date would be set um, for testing on the week of September 13th. I don't think you gave us a week and then we never were informed. I was the only one that was here. Okay, I, my recollection was that I said that, you know, I think I pointed out the week of the 13th as an available week and I think I sent emails out after that once we got the ballots to try to schedule that out. I know Jim sent an email regarding his unavailability at a certain that. date. So we were trying to figure out a date, but we right. never, I don't think, I never I got, I got one. Something yeah. that said it was a I never got one, but okay. I, my, email. my recollection, I, I think I did send an email about the 13th and then I did provide a notice. Uh, and I remember Jim sent an email saying that he was unavailable because of, of, um, absolutely. And right. I know we're so going back and back and forth and I thought that the 13th, but I don't think it was finalized because Mark didn't get updated as well as, um, Commissioner Anthes, Anthes didn't get updated. Okay. Um, so I just happened to just remember I came in. I just and then I yeah. came in super early. I didn't even know what time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Um, moving forward, well, especially given that we have an item on the agenda, we'll take a look at, at trying to make sure that the scheduling yeah. works better for everyone. And that's okay. I know that there was a lot going on, so. I was asleep. <laughs> Those are only two changes that I have. Okay. Anyone else? Nope. Okay, I guess hearing none, uh, is there a motion to accept the meeting minutes? 
So moved. Okay, motion from uh, Commissioner Pope. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Seconded from, by Commissioner Anthes. Uh, any discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, none opposed. Uh, minutes are passed. Okay, on to... Uh, I have an additional old business. Uh, okay. While we were sitting around on election day, the guy from uh, LHS was there, and we asked him about the poll pads, and he says they get them in every day. They just gotten a shipment of 100 before. He says there's... He said there may be something going on with the uh, higher up, but he said uh, loading them with the software is basically trivial. Uh, <clears throat> and... Uh, so that's one reason particularly we want to talk to LHS, find out what's going on there. They're claiming they can't get them to us when they're getting shipments in regularly and they already have the software set up, the app set up for us, and all they have to do is load it. Um, the only thing from what we could tell in talking to him is we just have to be willing to pay for it. Well, my understanding from, uh, I, did you speak to Mike, was it? Whoever was there at the table all day. Yeah, it was uh, Mike. Uh, my understanding from Mike was that, because um, I guess I asked him about that because I think he brought it up, and he said that, you know, it's one thing to have supplies, but it's another thing to have availability. Because when I spoke with, you know, other people at LHS Associates, they said, you know, it's not just a question of receiving the pull pads, it's a question of, you know, reserving them, you know, with the time necessary to get you know, the supplies in. Yeah. So what well, we'd like to I talk also, to the guy. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I also um spoke with Mike. Um I was there in the in the um in the room. Um and I asked him what was the availability because I remember you saying that. Mm -hmm. Um and he said that there's absolutely availability for us to receive an additional poll pass up to like a hundred for November. Because I know that there was an issue with um supply demand availability is what we've been told right and that's um, what i've been informed right but um as commissioner pope um stated he asked um the lhs um, um work person that was there and i believe his name was mike um and he indicated that they had ample amount of a pull pads and then i asked about availability for next election, which is November 2nd, and he, had, and he indicated that he had, that they absolutely had, all we needed to do was just ask. Place the order. Place the order. Okay, well. Come up with the money. I'll reach out again to LHS, but again, my understanding from the poll pad division, which is, you know, again, Brendel Italian and the others, was that one, you have to sort of reserve them ahead of time, and they're, you know, they're again questions of supply and things like that. But I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to LHS. Okay, sure. that's what we'd like to talk to him, get the, I guess the word from the horse's mouth or whatever we do these days. Um, and um, Elliot, I just wanted to just kind of um, backtrack and just remind um, us, like the reason why we wanted the poll pads. You know, it was a success story for this past preliminary election. Yes. And knowing that, hopefully, that we're going to get much more of a wider turnout in November, um, we don't want people waiting in line. We want people to be able to be checked in. And now that the, um, the poll workers are um, trained on the poll pads and they're an easier way of conducting the elections, I only think or we only feel as though that this is probably the, the best way to move forward going forward yeah we'd also like to look at another polling place in district four on the other side of the river <clears throat> so. I, again i can reach out to and i'll certainly reach out to lhs on this but regarding an additional polling place we're, jim we're well past the ability to put another polling place in i mean we've already again as required by state law given the postings as to what the polling locations are going to be in november i mean we can't and, and I'm not saying this because, you know, out of logistics or things like that. I just mean in, in, for purposes of state law and for purposes of where we are now, we can't essentially change horses in midstream in regards of adding a new polling location. I mean, we've already pro programmed in into VRIS the polling locations for District 4. 
it, you know, and again, it was Lowell High School and Rogers. And the state, and believe me, I've been working with the state diligently to try to, to get the system to work. And that's the system that was used during the preliminary. We, and again, I, I'm just saying this because I've been dealing with it hands on. We can't change it now. We can't add any additional polling locations at this stage. It, it's just, there's no time. Okay, so going back to the poll pads though, um, we would like additional poll pads. Okay, I, I, and again, I will reach out to LHS to, to you know, regarding that, but. Ask them to reach out to us. Uh, another item too, it's, I don't know uh, what the significance is, but um, from, I've been told that our minutes are not out on the website, city website. Which minutes? Our minutes? Our minutes, are they out there? I didn't check. Uh, they should be out on the agenda, yeah, agenda net. The agenda and the minutes? Yeah, the, there's a minute section. To the extent that there aren't any minutes out there, I'll make sure that they're put on there. Okay, good. I, I didn't check, I got it. Yeah, the way agenda net works is you have the agenda and then you have the minutes posted next to the item. To the extent that any are, because I'll double check, but if there's any missing, I'll make sure that they're put on so okay. they're updated. Yeah. I can't vouch for it personally. I just it's yeah. easy. Live in a big building right and people yap at me a lot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> to the extent any are missing, I mean, it could be. Uh, it may be that they haven't been updated yet, but I have them in you know the elections database, mm -hmm. uh, and and they're in my you know the secured server for elections, so they're all there. So to the extent they haven't been uploaded yet, I'll just make sure they're uploaded. Okay. Okay, um, I guess moving forward to new business, so item A. Um, I just prepared a couple of communications regarding uh, the experience we had with the preliminary. So uh, the first communication was regarding the results of the September 21st preliminary election and the ballot order for the November 2nd, 2021 municipal election. Um, so again, the last day in which someone could withdraw from being a candidate or filing a challenge was yesterday, uh, we haven't received any withdrawals or challenges, so the, uh, uh, and we were also able to finalize the results for the preliminary election. So, um, uh, as you can see in the back, the official results are there. And um, I know also that uh, Commissioner Pope brought up a question regarding uh, ballot order and uh, our re uh, again, we double checked and our research is that under Mass General Law, specifically Chapter 54, Section 41, um, the order uh, of candidates is done in alphabetical order with uh, incumbents first and then um, uh, challengers after. And uh, the phrase candidate for re-election is placed for those that are incumbents. Now, um, under state law too, there's a um, provision that if you are running in like let's say you originally ran for a district seat but you are now running for an at-large seat you can't be listed as an incumbent but because this is the first time we're doing this election the way it works is that if what you represent uh, geographically covers you know a district or something like that you're treated as an incumbent so all incumbents from the previous city council and school committee will be listed as incumbents on this ballot Obviously, in future elections, if someone is in a district seat and decides to run at large, then they wouldn't be listed as incumbent. But for purposes of state law, um, people will be listed as candidates for re-election if they've served in the city council and school committee, uh, or currently are serving on the city council or school committee. But they're not incumbents if they are if they're moving from at large to district. Well, um, they are because under state law, and I quote, a candidate for election to the same office in a precinct ward or district which contains any portion of the territory which he was elected to represent at the last preceding municipal election shall be considered an elected incumbent. So because everyone it was, is at large, the, the district that they're running for, if they're running for district, is part of the geographic territory of their area of coverage so 
again, under state law, they, they are deemed incumbents for purposes of this election. Is this, not, is this known as the Incumbent Protection Act? <laughs> state I mean, law is state law. I, can't. I know, it's pretty blatant though. Whatever. So there's no other uh, discussion on this. I'll move on to um, uh, item B, which is, again, this is a communication regarding observations that we received uh, during the uh, preliminary uh, election, uh, addressing, again, voter numbers per location, um, observations on early voting polling locations, uh, DPW, LPD deployment, and sign setup. Uh, one, again, another comment I get since... <laughs> I walk slowly, people can catch up to me. And um, apparently, uh, uh, at least at Rogers, there was not a sign up that said, you know, enter here to vote. And there's two entrances into Rogers and people were kind of shaking on one door, not finding it and going down to another. And I believe we have signs. We have the- There were signs out at Rogers, um, uh, but uh, what we can do is, uh, and again, this is, you know, part of- yeah. It's, as they say, it's an iterative process. We look to improve every time. Yeah. What we can do is, um, I'll take a look at the Rogers location, yeah. and uh, we'll yeah. we'll see also, if we can do some. Also, the Riley location. There were people that went to the front door. Mm -hmm. That there yeah. wasn't any signing to go to the back, which yeah. we should have. Okay. For the next election. Yeah. Okay. So for Rogers and Riley, uh, we'll look to have some signage put up there, at the front door. Okay. I think it was in place at Lowell High School. Okay. Build the door to go into. Yeah, I know at Lowell High School we did put up uh, signs and an A-frame uh, at the front door directing them to go to the cafeteria, which is where everyone votes. So we'll make sure that, that that's carried on to the next election. So just to summarize sort of the observations that we received on the preliminary, overall, I think location setup was, was good. Um, the, uh, in terms of the early in-person voting, the general observation was that uh, voters took advantage, uh, it seems just in terms of numbers, more at the senior center than at the satellite locations. Although, um, of the satellite locations, it appears that Green Helge was the one that people took the most advantage of. Um, That's understandable. Yeah, unfortunately, the, at JG Pine, uh, on the first day, we had no one who showed up to vote. And um, at um, the CMMA, we only had one person, I think, who showed up to vote at the- uh, On Thursday. Yeah, on Thursday. And uh, we did get nine people on the second day, but. Overall, um, based on observations from poll workers who was working there and also voters that when, when asked at the location, they, they indicated that um, they thought the senior center was just more convenient um, and um, particularly with the availability of parking. So uh, on election day itself for the preliminary, um, overall impressions just from early setup and things like that were good uh, the day before just like we have in typical elections dbw transported poll booths equipment supplies and an auto mark machine to each of the five polling locations and um, setup was configured just like in early voting to allow for centralized processing of voters and to allow for single flow we're able to help keep COVID down uh, COVID protocols remained uh, in effect with masks and uh, PPE and the like, and the isolation table as well. We made sure that one was set up there. Um, observations from DPW workers indicated that setup was smooth. Uh, no major issues were purported the day before the election, nor at morning setup. Um, uh, I have to, again, commend DPW and the school department for their cooperations and assistance. Uh, without it, uh, any, any of the setup would not be possible. Uh, poll workers as well, uh, we had, um, again, for the preliminary elections, we purposely overstaffed uh, for our locations to give our poll workers as much experience as possible with the centralized setup and the new equipment. Poll workers, uh, the main observation for poll workers is that setup was, uh, again, straightforward, no issues with 
AccuVotes or Automarks. The only thing they did mention was that um, setting up the power cords was a little trickier uh, this time because they also had to take into account the pole pads. We did make sure to include extra extension cords and power strips. And uh, they did mention though that because each polling location has different outlet setups that sometimes they had to make sure that they had the correct outlet and things like that. But um, for the preliminary, we had more than enough extension cords and power strips to accommodate each location. And uh, what I'm gonna be doing is, is that for November, we are gonna be looking to procure additional extension cords and power strips so that each of the 11 locations will have uh, additional power strips and uh, cords available. Because it, hopefully they'll have additional pole, pole pads. <laughs> well, again. So yeah. Um, are we, are you almost? I uh, know there, there's some more observations. Okay. Um, LBD officers were deployed um, to the polling locations on or about 5.30 a.m. Uh, for this election and for November, two officers were assigned to each polling locations, uh, one for each automark. Uh, for November, uh, we've been sort of looking at it, and I think for what we're gonna do in November is we're gonna have three AccuVote machines at the location. And the reason for that is we're gonna, just like in the preliminary election, there'll be two AccuVote machines that people will process that day, so your ballot can go into either one. And what we're thinking of doing is we're gonna have a third AccuVote machine, and that one's gonna be completely dedicated to processing early voting and absentee voting ballots. So that instead of taking up space and time at the, the two machines that are taking in in-person voters, you'll have just a third machine there that'll process all the AVs and EVs. So that'll make it easier for everyone. Yeah. And we can put it, and uh, my plan is, is that we'll put it out of the way near the ward and clerk table yep. so that, you know, they'll just process those. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very good. It'll just be completely dedicated to that. So that was, it, it'll free up time. Yeah, that was congestion. Uh, right. One thing we need to do is uh, re remind the wardens of how to put the folded ballots in. Because a lot of them are having trouble. If they were putting them in so it was like this, of course it wouldn't catch. Instead of putting it so the ballot was folded down, it would go through. Yeah, I, I plan in, in the training for November, I'm going to reemphasize uh, how to deal with uh, folded ballots. Again, use the ruler, use the edge of your table, flatten them out. If it doesn't go in one way, flip it around and put it in another way, that sort of thing. Another thing that came up too, and it uh, seemed almost trivial to me, but at the end, um, Warden was saying, I'm not posting the, the election results. I've never done that before. I said, you have to, it says right there. And yeah. Does it. No, no, no. And I said, well, it says I'm supposed to stand up and announce them too. Well, <laughs> I haven't heard anybody ever do that, but yeah. I think People that's- have done that. In yeah, place. in fact, we did it at the Riley. Yeah. So um, what location were you at? Uh, Lowell High. Okay, Lowell High, we'll so, double. But in fact, you know, the only people left in there are the workers at the time. So right. Whether or not they announce it, I think it doesn't matter. But they should post it because people are dependent yeah. on that. Yeah, and they do, and they do post it and announce it. I'll double check uh, with our ward and clerk set up there, and we'll again with our training, we'll just remind people on that. So, um, moving on uh, to, and thank you for that. I'll I'll just. Yeah. Uh, we'll look into that at Lowell High School. That, that just surprised me because the ward seemed experienced. And then to say, I've never posted the results. I thought, you must have posted the results. It's yeah. done everywhere, every time. And knowing Lowell High School, they have posted results in the past. So yeah. it, it, again, it could be just the fact that we overloaded locations with wardens and clerks. It could be that one of the, war, you know, we also changed positions. So some people who were not wardens before were wardens uh, this year. And again, you know, just to make sure that we could accommodate everyone, so. Again, not a reflection on their capabilities. It's more just a reflection of making sure that we staff them as much as we could so people get can get experience. Name tags, because I walk in and I look around, who's the warden? So yeah. Well, let me think. Who yeah, no yeah. yeah, and our kits include the, the name tags. And <laughs> so- They just don't put them on, huh? It could be that one didn't put it on, but again, we'll take a look at it. Yeah. Um, you, they don't believe you anyway. <laughs> going back to LPD2, um, LPD reported that uh, delivery of all the equipment to and from the location was orderly. No major issues reported at polling locations. And they said that officer arrival back to City Hall was smooth and uneventful. So it was good overall. Nice. And um, 
finally, in terms of sign advertising, we did set up A-frames at locations prior to the election. We'll be doing so again uh, this year uh, for November. And uh, again, the locations that were sort of done to advertise the election, which had the date of the election, it was uh, near each of the polling locations, plus at high volume traffic areas like near City Hall and, and in the area. So we'll look again to, to do that again for, um, uh, for November. I also Some want, oh, excuse me. Uh, As you say, some of the candidates do that too, so we kind of get double coverage. And when they're out their visibilities, they'll have signs saying, you know, register by such and such, you know, absentee ballot yeah. by such and such. So. Yeah, and I know that candidates have been showing signs and things like that, so that does help. But, you know, uh, the city also puts out its own signage uh, as part of its effort to remind voters to vote, along with, again, uh, what we do on, on our website and social media and, uh, you know, our mailings. So. Okay. So um, can we remember to put the signage on the older polling locations that are no longer going to be polling locations for folks that are used to going to those places? Can we also put a sign up there that this is no longer a polling location? Sure. Yep. What we'll do is, um, so we're going to be using uh, 11 this year. For those that we aren't using, we'll make sure that a sign is put up saying that uh, this is not a polling location. To check what your polling location is, contact City Hall, something like that. I say for this election, because we may go back and use them again. Right. That's why I said for, for this election. Yeah. So. Um, and I wanted to go back to... To this um, I really wish we had gotten this um, before our meeting so we can go over and think about our questions that we have because mm -hmm. as we're as we are as we're talking I, I keep going back to us so um, can you please explain again how every how how every ballot is going to indi is, in, is going to indicate each incumbent because it let's just say for instance I don't know maybe um, the Pawtucketville race, mm -hmm. there's two incumbents that are there. Yep. Um, are they both going to say incumbent? It, it, choose one? Yes. Because usually when you say incumbent, right, um, people tend to, you know, vote that way. Um, and so I'm wondering, right. I'm wondering um, for those races. So, the again, and this is again, governed by state law. So, so the way it would be listed is incumbents are listed in alphabetical order first. So to use, by way of your example, you were bringing up the District 1 race. So for that District 1 city council seat, the two people running for that are both incumbents. Right. So on the ballot, they'd both be listed as candidate for re-election. And then the instructions would be vote for one. <laughs> I can see that. Somebody's saying, how can you have two incumbents for one seat? <laughs> Again, it's the nature of the fact that we're going from an at-large system yeah, to a district system. So, so what happens to the non-incumbents? Are they in alphabetical order? Or are they in random order? Or? No, it's alphabetical order. So it, it goes incumbents first, alphabetical order, then uh, other candidates in alphabetical order. And the at-large race, the same thing? Yes. So for the at-large race, it would be the same thing. So for that one, it would be all incumbents listed in alphabetical order followed by all remaining candidates listed in alphabetical order. Guess who's going to win? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, and again, that's, that's how. I'm not sure. I don't, you know. We have to wait and see on November 2nd, right? Yep. Um, so, so that's pretty much it for the preliminary overall I think um, so has this been communicated remember a few months ago when we, when we were talking about the polling locations and I kind of said it really quietly that this is probably going to blow up so is, has this been communicated to everyone that's running like openly on the website has it been communicated it needs to be communicated, even if you have to send it to all of the um, regarding ballot order. Yes, the it should be communicated because again, this is a this is a new election. This is a new change, and this is something that we hadn't like hadn't have to think about before. Uh, 
Well, I mean, I mean, it can. Yes, we I, should just communicate. I'm asking uh, that we communicate it. Okay, to the I, I mean, right. to the candidates. Yeah, it's just, well. Yes. I mean, we can certainly let them yeah. be aware of state law. You know, the Mass okay. General Law, Chapter yeah. 54, Section 41. Yeah. So. So, um, and then when when it's when it's communicated, whatever communication that you do give them, can you also CC the commissioners? Thank you, Ali. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um. The other thing was um, the drop boxes. I guess there was a, a drop box that wasn't. Yes, the lock working. broke. The lock broke on one of them. But what we did was we locked it, and we made sure that a sign was placed on it to direct voters to the JFK Plaza mm -hmm. to deposit ballots and the JFK Plaza one was working fine and we received ballots up through election day so um, we have already been in communication with the locksmith they're going to be hopefully coming out this week to take a look at it and repair it okay. so yeah but the um, but there were drop boxes working on election day the one in JFK and people were coming into the elections office to drop off ballots so yeah and we did have a sign that was at the Middlesex one indicating that you know, there was a lock. One of the lock was broken and directing them to JFK Plaza. It so. was there. Um, are, are you done with your, because I have another thing that, um, on that day. Uh, sure, yeah. Okay. Um, so a couple of, of people came in, obviously we have this in every election where their addresses were not um, changed either by, you know, elections office or the, um, um, our, the DMV, mm -hmm. um, and so they have to um, vote if they register wherever their address is registered for them to vote. So, with this election, with uh, with the um, pre preliminary, um, it changed obviously, right? Where people where people are going to vote. So for one, for I think I spoke to you about this. There was one instance where there was a. Um, a um, an old resident of of Centerville who now lives downtown, who indicated that he had been following the race down the downtown candidates, and wanted to vote for somebody downtown. However, because um, the RMV um, or he was staying in the elections office, I'm not sure whichever, did not up accurately update his his address he had to then go and vote in a district race where mm -hmm. he's no longer in that district. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Where's the RMB? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. okay. so, so, I, um, so with this, we're going to see this a lot more. And it's not like before where you choose, you know, nine and it's all over the city. This is going to be specific to districts now. So when we have this issue, um, I did tell them afterwards, after thinking about it, that we're going to have to be provided with um, education on provisional ballots. So when people come in and they want to vote, right? Right. We have to we have to care for that in some way. So he was given the ballot. He didn't really want to vote for, you know, the that district's candidates because he no longer lives there and he was following the downtown race right mm -hmm. but he had to because his address was not updated right by whomever well so that's going to happen a lot more so i wanted us to talk about this as a body yeah try to find out ways in which day of that we can accommodate these folks and then i also think too as part of the packet that you give everyone as a um, for training should have a list, especially in the clerk's report of these instances, so that people can't say that oh I've gone there three or four or five different times to try to update my information, and it just doesn't get updated. So um, they can keep a running tally or to, uh, or, or name of names and addresses of people that are going to come in to do this. And then also we need to we need to think about how we're going to care for that because it's no it's no longer a citywide citywide um, 
race. It's a district specific race for people that may or may not live in the districts now. Right. Now, the, the way that it has been, well, the way that you deal with a situation like this is again through the provisional ballot procedure. Now, right. you know, my right. train, yeah, my training uh, that we've done every year emphasizes, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but, but our- no, I just wanted, to, I just wanted to, to emphasize that they did not know what to do in that instance. Do you understand? So, which means that there has to be, so now we, ha now we have specific scenarios that we've never had before mm -hmm. that are coming up with this, again, this new change. So we have to incorporate that in the training so that people know how to care for those instances that are, that are absolutely gonna happen because they happened before in the past to all of us when we're there. And it's gonna be happen now in a way that it, it's gonna impact or affect a candidate's vote. So, so, our, so, our, so our poll workers have to be aware that that is the way in which we have to be able to care for that. Right. And then we have to also um, take um, the information down because it's usually not the first time that they've said that they've, that they've gone through this. So now with the change, it's almost imperative that, that it has to get fixed. So I think that we should also incorporate in the training a, a, a running total or a tally of people that are having this issue. Yeah. Um, first, uh, regarding that running total or tally, uh, there already is a running. So the way, the way the provisional ballot process works, and, and this has been a part of poll worker training uh, since the start, is that we have set up our provisional ballots so that in the event that a provisional ballot needs to be done, it's set up in a kit. So the voter goes to the warden and clerk, and the provisional ballot kits are set up within the orange provisional ballot bag. And the provisional ballot has, the provisional ballot kit has an envelope which stapled to the envelope is the provisional ballot affirmation that the voter needs to fill out. Yes. And also stapled to it is a voter registration card. So the voter can immediately fill out their voter registration card. And then after the election, we can um, you know, update or input the voter into the system if they haven't done it, or update the voter information to the extent that they failed to update their address if they say moved in the city, which so, is, is, you know, which- So Elliot, happens. yes, uh, maybe, maybe I'm not being clear. So we understand that that is the answer to that issue. The poll workers did not understand that. What was happening was um, if they did not find them in the poll pads or they had a different address, they sent them to the other location, the polling location, to vote there. Okay. Do you understand? So well, he came, so let me finish. Yeah. So then he came in and says that I've, I've been living downtown for X, over two years now, and I've been following the downtown race. I wanted to vote for a candidate downtown. However, my address has not been updated into the system and I have to vote here. And then I told him, I said, no, what, ha what should have happened or what should happen is that you're there at your, at your polling location and they give you a provisional ballot. Well, the, no, sorry, the, what, where your, sorry, where your, your address, your current address is, which is where he was in Centerville. Well, the, the procedure though is, is that if you are at your incorrect address, the poll, Oh, we're here from 5.30 to 6.30. It's... Okay, all right, that's, that's my question. Oh, oh, okay, sorry about that. Um, the way the procedure is, is, is that- Is there a note out there? Hmm? Is there a letter, is, did you put, uh, you no. put your sign? No, I, I, okay. I, didn't, I didn't think there was something at 6.30, at least I wasn't informed on this. Um, the way the procedure is, is that if a voter is in the incorrect location, and you look them up in the system and you find out what their correct polling location is, the, again, state procedures and poll worker training is, is that you do everything in your power to tell that voter to go to the correct location because that's where they vote. In the event that they refuse to go or that they insist, no, I'm not going to my correct polling location or for whatever reason, then you go to the provisional ballot pr procedure. Again, the way I train it is it's the voting of last resort. So if, so it can't be the voting of last resort because we are in a district-centric um, election now. So if someone does not live in that district any longer, 
and they've been following their district's um, election or their the people that are knocking on their doors in that district, and they have to go to a former address, instead of sending, instead of it being a last resort, we have to now train it as, if this happens, this is what you do, as a first resort. But it, it can't be a first resort, Why? because because again, you can only vote in the location where you're registered to vote. So if they're not in, if they're not in the voter rolls for that location, they have to go either to the location where they are in the voter list, or again, as that last resort, they can vote provisional. But when you do provisional review, if the voter is not in the correct location, it's, it's an automatic reject because they're, they're- No, it's not. What we do is we're supposed to look at that and make a, make a decision as a body. That's what I understood. But it's not an automatic reject. But we for, have to. We but have, for purposes of state law, it is because if you're not registered in the correct location, if you're not voting in the correct location, then again, you can't be checked off like you would in, you know, as in traditional uh, elections. Like it, it'd be as if a voter. So I think we need to take this away. Like, I think we need to really get clarification on this because this is absolutely going to happen, especially in the district-based um, um, election. What's happening too, and I know this guy she's talking about lives in my building, and he, he his RMV apparently, uh, it happened to me too, then didn't screw it up, but they re-registered me. Didn't mm -hmm. ask me, they just did it. And if they do it wrong and you don't catch it, you could be screwed in the next election, couldn't vote. Right, which again is why voters are, you know, it is the voters' obligation to check their registration to make sure that it's correct. And that's why, you know, again, we urge voters to do it and the last day that they can register to vote is October 13th. But state law is, is quite clear that if you are not in the correct location where you are registered to vote as, as per the state rules, you can only vote in that location. Are we sending the um, the cards? You know how we sent the the um, this yes. is where you're where you are um, su supposed to vote. Yeah. Are we sending them those yeah, um, those cards to the 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 addresses that we have in the system? Correct. Yeah. So at some point we must have gotten some of those back. Correct. Well, yeah. those that either refuse to accept them or. or Somebody might just throw it away. Yeah, or throw it away. I mean, so if that happened to me with my taxes. my question my question is, <clears throat> a mass mailing went out. Some at every mass mailing, some things come back saying that no longer lives here, no longer is there. You know, from the mail from the mailing system, correct? Uh, no, not from the mailing system. Well, not from the system. From from voters. I mean, yeah. voters can ignore it and throw them out, throw them out at their. I mean. It's their choice. I mean, we, we do, as state law requires, so I, to I, inform I, voters, but it's not our obligation to. Right. I get, I get old mail sometimes from somebody that used to live there. I give it back to my mailman saying, this person doesn't live here anymore. And they take it with them. It's because you're a nice person. <laughs> when, when we moved in, the people we bought the place from got the tax bill and threw it away. And we didn't find out until we got a delinquent tax bill. Wow. So, so I was so I'm trying to figure out ways in which we can double check ourselves and help and help this process along so that we're um, um, resolving issues rather than you know and thinking forward and seeing if we can resolve issues before they happen. Right, and and you know the the city is again reaching out to voters, making sure that they're aware when the last day to register to vote is, you know, reminding voters to check their voter registration to make sure they're in the correct place. All location. that's going to the address you have, and if the address you have is not correct, they're not getting it. Right. Right, and again, but, but ultimately it's up to the voter to make sure that their voter registration right. is so, correct. So I can't. I understand what you're saying. I wanna, for example, I know my registration was correct. If RMV had screwed it up and changed it, why would I assume I have to check it again? I've already right. voted multiple times and I haven't moved. So why it, would I bother to check it? And unfortunately, I'm not in charge of the RMV. I know you're I'm not. Like, I'm just, I'm not blaming you. I'm just telling you what's happening sometimes. And it's the voters who end up not being able to vote and get very upset. And so I don't, I don't know how we do that. And then, right. And, and <clears throat> again, I, I, I certainly sympathize with them and, and we do everything in our power to make sure that 
you know, voter information is correct and up to date. And again, when we receive voter registration cards, we make sure that, you know, they're updated as the applicant has written it in. But, you know, again, there's a variety of factors that can come into play when, when something like this occurs. It could be a voter moved and forgot to register to vote. It could be a voter, yeah. so you know. Now when that card comes in, <clears throat> does the voter have to have signed it? Well, yeah, it, 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 there's also situations where voters submit incomplete applications. No, no, I'm so. talking about when you get something in for registration, it comes in the mail, like from RMV, is it supposed to be signed by the voter? I can't, uh, to be honest, I can't speak for the RMV's well, registration. Well, it comes to you when you look at it. You oh, yes. Your signature. Right. When, when we get a voter registration card, the first thing we always check is to make sure that, all, that they have filled out all of the information needed. To the extent that they haven't done it, we, we okay. mail it back to them and highlight what they failed to do. Like, we often get one where, you know, people who are registering to vote forget to sign it. And that's one of the mandatory requirements. You have to sign it. Or it's a situation where they don't check off that they're a U.S. citizen. And you have to do that. that that's one of the things you have to do when you fill out an application. So what we do is if we receive an incomplete application, we highlight it and send it back to the voter. But I, had, I did nothing at RMV about voting, but they sent in a registration form. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it wasn't that weird. They were busy and they were hassled. I took time with them. And I was surprised when I got that thing that said the RMV had registered me to vote. Hmm. I said, I didn't fill out anything. I didn't sign anything, but somehow they sent my name in to register me to vote. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> my understanding, I guess, is that the RMV will, you know, I think there's an automatic voter registration system with the RMV. So if you don't check off that you don't want to be re-registered, they do it automatically or something like that. And if they get it so, wrong, you're... So right. So I just right want to go back to the provisional ballots. I just, uh, so my understanding is when someone does the provisional ballot as a last resort, you, you indicated that it was an automatic rejection? No, it's reviewed, but... Again, the, the, the general procedure is that unless the voter is registered to vote at that location, you have to, again, thoroughly look at it. And part of the issue with the, the districts now is that it used to be a situation where everyone would vote. You know, it was, a, it was an at-large ballot. So, even, you know, so long as the voter was registered to vote in the city, you know, some leeway could be given to the fact that, oh, you know, everyone's using the same ballot. Well, it doesn't work that way anymore. It's now more like a state election where we're divided up into three districts. So if you are a provisional voter and you're in the wrong district for like a congressional race, well, yeah, you can vote for, you know, even if you're in the incorrect, again, we don't turn voters away, so you vote provisional, but when the provisional ballot is reviewed by staff, it's going to have to be rejected because they weren't registered to vote in that location. But if you know? they're showing, because the reason for the provisional ballot, they show exactly the reason why they have to vote provisionally. So if they're showing that they don't live there anymore and their address is this and they have, they have information that shows that their address is this, why would that not count? Because they aren't registered to vote at that location. The, the voter registration is ultimately... I think we need to look into this further. I... Because it's a, it's a it's now we've changed again the the um, the the way in which our elections are being run in Lowell, and so these things have not mattered before, and they will now. Well, they've always mattered. Though. Well, I mean, they're so, not they're I not going to be as always mattered. Yes, yeah. I mean, yes. and 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 we followed the same procedure, you know, year after year, which is again, you know, you have and and and. It's sort of we're bound by state law on this. And, no, and I understand. So what was so? What, do you understand my the question that I'm posing to you? No, no, I am under. I, I do understand the the, the question you you're posing. That the, it, the um the what we have as a remedy does not work. Is not working for for that. But the remedy is the the quote unquote remedy is again, we're bound to by state law as to what the outcome is. Okay. It, it, and again, it's. Where you're registered to vote is where you check in, you know, and, and it's the ward precinct model. Okay. You need to talk to our state senator, right? <laughs> right. I, you know, I think I can figure that out. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> like, Maybe. and again, I, I think the, the, best, the, the best solution to this I think you should post something is, to, is to double check your voter registration and make sure that, you know, you are registered in your correct address. And again, the election office is, is ready, willing to help voters on that. And we've, okay. 
and we will make sure that we get the word out so that people you know know where their district is and, and where they're registered to vote but you know as they say i don't call provisional voting the voting of last resort you know on a whim under state law it truly is and because we don't turn a voter away but state law makes it quite clear that even if you vote provisional you make it clear to the voter that it's likely not going to count because you're not in your correct location. That's, not, that's, that's why we've been spending so much time trying to make sure that our voter registration is up to date and that our, you know, our districts are, our district lists are correct. So. These, these ballots are pre-printed. Right? Yes, they're pre-printed. So to do what you're kind of hinting at, you would have to have a ballot, that, well, more than one, to each, road, each uh, voting place. Which, which is not possible. Uh, mm -hmm. So, <laughs> sorry. I, 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 was trying, I, I was trying for him to get there, but like, yeah, so, but yeah, okay, but I understand we can't do it. Right. Okay. And, and, and again, so I'm not, I'm not saying that to be. I know, flippant. I understand. Like, you know, I, I'm just sort of discussing the reality of it. So. Okay. Um, given that we have a, a meeting, I was just going to combine uh, items C and D together. So, again, just to review the election calendar for, uh, November um, again for October 13th uh, that is the last date and hour to register to vote before the municipal election and we will be just like in the preliminary the elections office will be open until 8 o'clock to accept uh, voter registrations uh, so uh, we've had uh, prior to the preliminary we had civic groups and things like that come and bring some last-minute registrations so we will likewise be open then um, October 25th is the last day for school committee members to file their campaign finance reports because uh, under state law, school committee people file it with us. City council members file it with the state, OFCF. Uh, October 26th will be the last day to post a warrant for the municipal election. Um, October 27th is the deadline to apply for a vote by mail ballot for municipal election. We'll be, we will accept those applications until five o'clock. Again, we will be open to make sure that uh, people accept it. Um, if you want to apply for an in-person absentee ballot, meaning that you come to City Hall and you get it, uh, the deadline for that is November 1st at noon, the day before the election, and then November 2nd is the municipal election. And then uh, on item D, so, so for the testing of the AccuVote machines, um, to make sure that this works out better for, in terms of availability, um, I can look to see if we can do it on a Tuesday. Uh, or a Thursday because I believe um, everyone's available uh, and again it would be in sort of the mornings I wanted to throw that out to see if that would work better with the commissioners and uh, under state law we have to do it at least four days before the election so again it's based on when we get the ballots um, and the printers are currently working on their proofs right now so the hope is that we will they'll be able to get to printing our EVs and regular ballots uh, soon uh, but we're still working on uh, translations and making sure that our proofs are correct. So um, is there a particular uh, set of days, depending on availability, that would work for everyone? Or? Um, Wednesday and Thursday and Friday actually work. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Yeah, Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, Wednesday, Thursday. I could do it on Tuesday. I have something at 2 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon. So, okay. Yeah, so let's okay. just do Tuesday because that works for everybody. Bev's off. I think. Tuesday okay. and Thursday. Yeah. Tuesday? Okay. So, uh, would a Tuesday morning work yeah. for everyone? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll, 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 look to, I'll look to see if we can do it on a Tuesday morning. I think at this stage, probably either the 19th or the 26th would be the likely days. Um, uh, okay, so obviously let's just say the 26th. Okay, the 26th. Okay. All right. We'll start one at eight or nine. We always have to wait till they fiddle with the machines. Yeah. We'll start at nine. And um, the test deck worked for the last one, so we will do a similar test deck again for this one. And again, uh, in terms of, it'll be 11 locations, three machines each. So. Testing the machines should probably be, you know, quicker again than they typically are done. So, okay. So I think that's that's it. So uh, anything else? Um, 
for our next meeting? I wanted to schedule that. Sure. We can make it two weeks from today. So that would be um, October 12th. Uh, so that's after Columbus Day. Yeah. Unless we have the opportunity to meet with LHS before then. Oops. Okay. Which one do you say? October which? October 12th. So that's Tuesday, October 12th. 530. Um, and um, if for the next meeting, um, can we just as an agenda item um, there's other uh, there are other um, cities that do the district right district um, elections? Yes, uh, um, Boston, Worcester. in Worcester. fact, I think most major municipalities do a district election so, we were the, um, one of the last is there any way that you can like just research and see um i, I just to see what they do because i just i just know that like because the last so one of the elections was only about 15 votes or something difference right one of them yeah. um and it's so important that even if it's just as if it's as small as 15 votes in electing someone that we try to count every vote and so if we're unable to where i was trying to get at was to have the ballots available with the provisionals then we like if there's anything else that they do that since we since we're new to this that they do that they may do differently that you can come back to us with okay i'll i'll, I'll see if i can reach out to clerks with other in other communities on that Marty Hogan, lost by 15. Okay. Um. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. Okay, motion for uh, Vice Chairman Pope. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, uh, seconded by Commissioner Anthos. Um, any discussion? No discussion on. Okay. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion passes. Uh, this meeting is adjourned at 628 p.m.